so going from now, we have, when we look at that uh, value proposition canvas first, the product market fit level before we even, even start validating bigger business model market fit level. Uh, everything is based on hypotheses that we have collected along the way. Theories from us between the teams, some initial testing uh, and, 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 and so forth. So to effectively go into doing that in a more real environment and starting to get uh, more out of that. Uh, one more canvas tool is called validation canvas that then helps to really dive into this part of, of now effectively doing that and recording the learnings and doing that iteration cycle in a documented manner. So basically this has the customer hypothesis, problem hypothesis, solution hypothesis and so forth. And then you have the riskiest assumption. So you start from what is like, if this is proven to be not true, then the whole company, nothing makes any, any difference. So that's why taking deep dive and drill into that, that uh, product market fit is so crucial to really find that, that uh, are we delivering value in, in gains or removing pains? And we have big enough group of segment of market segment of customers that we have identified that we can cater for. So now you have testing invalidated, validated, and you start from, from these, these aspects. Customers, problems, solution, uh, assumptions, and other core assumptions from the business model canvas. And, and then basically you start with the riskiest ones first, or you prioritize them with the risk profile, and, and then you basically uh, start validating those effectively. So the key is to run this exercise as effectively and as fast as possible while also documenting the learnings and making uh, next versions. So then when we look at um, some of the, these activities in practice, so we already covered some of those uh, models in, in, the, in the context of uh, how to structure that MVP approach. And, and that depends on your, we, we, we can't go too much into details of how to build different types of products. So that's why we, we're not going to, assume it's a digital product or a physical product. We're just assuming that you have the team and skills to be able to create the product that you, you want. So then we focus on, on, on the more generic uh, factors. But regardless of what that product is, this is one of the, 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 the most uh, authentic and effective ways of testing the revenue potential and the validation of the uh, of, of, of the business side of it. This is not the most effective way to validate the customer experience and whether they are gaining the values that they are looking. So, but this is for for, for validating the, the business potential and and, the, and many other factors. But this part doesn't yet cover uh, or, or the the customer value extraction, actually using the product needs to be recorded separately. But let's look at this uh, from a, a very business standard way. So we start with the customer segment that we have identified. And we have the inbound channels and the outbound channels. So basically this means that the outbound is that we call the customer, we send a message, uh, somehow we approach the customer, we stop them in the street or we go to the coffee shop where they are or we, we reach them through uh, a, a customer channel or, or a partner channel and then the other part is inbound channel we just spread our message wide and loud through advertising or content marketing or whatever means that is we make ourselves known and people who receive those in different channels shared by their friends or whatever, it resonates with them and then, then, then they come in as an inbound. So these are the two key, key uh, approaches. 
So, of course, the first level in the funnel when we think about validation is that now we have the awareness level. We are creating awareness through direct or indirect way, through channels uh, that, that we use to push Like a, like a net in that sense. From that awareness now, our message, uh, our brand, our communication has catched the awareness and the next level is the website. So uh, website is, the, is obviously it's the whole uh, window of, of what your business is about. So that's the, that's the place where you where you get get um, the audience in place so website is very very important uh, whether that's a product website whether that's the whole company website uh, whether it's just a landing page which is okay for the initial validations then there, there is some kind of demonstration about the product again this can be a video recording done from clicking the use screens through a user journey to just show them how the product works, even if the product don't exist. You can create a video out of it and you can put a demo of a product on your website so customers can experience the product. Uh, if you want to see a lot of creative ways of, of showcasing MVPs, you can go to crowdfunding sites because maturity, or oh, there's a lot of products that don't exist yet that have been created to have a sense of like they would exist uh, but they don't exist. But you can still buy them and then hope you will some, someday get it. And most of those uh, will be delivered. Of, oftentimes, they have a lot of challenges. They are late, the pricing change, or in some cases, the products never even arrived. But you can create demos uh, out of not ever having the product itself. <clears throat> and then there's the buy-in. The buy-in is not only that they actually pay, the buy-in, the commitment is that, okay, I submit or I order or I sign up or whatever that is, that's the buy-in. Now they have seen the demo and they say, okay, I want to go to the next, next level. And then the final piece is the use. And the use is the part that, of course, you can't fake if you do it in a digital environment if you don't have the actual product existing. So that's why if it's if it's a product that you actually also, and, and of course in, you have to do this anyway, but this you may change the order of, of what you want to validate first. So do you want to validate that there is a market before you build the product? Or do you want to validate that the product actually delivers that value, not just the promise of the value first, before you start validating the market because you can work either side but eventually you need to get the fit so that both both sides uh, match. So this may, may be, um, there is no right or wrong because it depends very much of the market timing, it depends on so many factors that you, you just have to get uh, more offline guidance, more specific mentoring for your specific product, for your specific business to help get answers to, to, to these levels of strategies. So, but eventually after the use, you either have happy customers or you have lukewarm customers like, nah, yeah, it kind of works, but it's not really, they're not super excited, they're not super happy, they may or may not use it, so that's, 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 a, that's not the type of validation you want to have. You either want them to love it or you want them to hate it to get clear, but the, 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 if they look one, you have to change something, you have to deep, uh, uh, dive deeper uh, and so forth. If you're looking to build a scalable business, you really need to have clearly happy customers. So maybe you need to find a more narrower segment or continue refining some parts, but try to find really happy customers. And, and that's that's your validation. So now, when we look at this, now it becomes very clear 
uh, how we can look at this is as numbers and what type of validation we're actually looking for. So instead of just looking at how many website visitors we have or how many we can reach or how many of this, the key is not that. The key is the conversions between uh, this, each of these steps along the way. So these are really the, the key factors to identify and the language you need to build uh, for your startup. What are our inbound channels? What kind of inbound channels we can find more where we can catch with the net the relevant awareness uh, to come to our website? Uh, what are the outbound channels? So you work with those. And through each inbound channel separately, you should track what are the conversion rates. So from each customer segment, each customer sub subsegment, uh, each different inbound channel, each different outbound channel, each of these you should track separately and, and cross measure and match to find what are the conversion rates, um, not only to the level of awareness where they come from, but also the whole conversion through the whole funnel uh, based on channel channels. <clears throat> So this really is your key core tool of, of validation, but also future development. So now, then once we have these conversion numbers, basically, um, then the, the, the key here is that the happier the customers are, the more they will create you more channels. So the customers are the gasoline. The happy customers are the ultimate gasoline for your scaling. So when you have happy customers, the happy customers will bring more customers and they are willing to protect you and they are willing to. So if, if they, they protect you from competition, they are willing to, some of them even, you, evangelize your business they are, they are the answer when someone says do you know anyone who's using has a solution for this they are the most trusted source um, to, to help you bring business and, and, and help bring scalability and network effect into your effort so basically um, that's that's the ultimate engine and if we look at this picture uh, and the conversions otherwise, the most costly channel is the paid advertising outbound channel. Um, so that is the that is the area that you can direct directly put money and calculate how much through conversions you can actually earn money. So it's a good place to measure. Also, for example, what would you do with investors' money? So now, if an investor would give you one hundred thousand and you would just put it in outbound advertising, but you don't know what your conversion rate is, you don't know what the value of the customer is, how long, how many pay, how long do they keep paying, depending on your business model. Now you don't have the right answer for the investor. So these are, this is the whole area where you find the, 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 the key answers for investors uh, as well. So don't just say that we're going to use money in advertising because that doesn't really tell anything. Tell what that money can do in the whole context of business and specifically if applied to advertising, how much 100, 100 euros will convert in business or how, how much 1,000 euros will convert in the, in the business. Or if there is no business, how much uh, $1,000 or euros will help you to learn. Like how much more will you learn with that money? Not saying that we will hire a person because that's not what the person does. It's, it's what it can bring for the business. <clears throat> Progress or, the, or revenue. And also then anything that you have visiting on your website basically all of that is already in your control and costs you nothing but your own team's effort to iterate to find better conversion rates. So whether that's from awareness 
level. So having your message out there or changing your message. Uh, if it's paid, that's when it costs you money. But when they are on your website, all the different steps after that are free or very, very cheap. So, but you need to get them through all these different steps. So that's your working area. So there's a lot of money spent typically on inbound and outbound channels without actually effectively spending time on, on refining and iterating the website, refining and iterating the demos that convert and refining and iterating the buy-in uh, moment uh, to be more effective. So that's why it's important to look at all of these steps in the funnel and also based on the different inbound channel or the even the different messages on the outbound channels and so forth. So some of the tools to do this whole exercise more effectively, there are things like quick MVP. So basically uh, this is the, it's, it's a toolkit or set that includes some of the key functions of all of these, so customer interviews, landing page, economics to measure these different elements. There are plenty of other tools out there, but I'd just like to put this uh, here as one example, uh, because this is kind of like, just should feel like a, like a relief in a certain way. When we go into so deep into understanding and rationale, what needs to be done, how it needs to be done, and so forth. It definitely, I understand, it definitely feels overwhelming. But, uh, but it doesn't mean that you should ignore it. It just means that you have to start doing all of it, but you can start with doing very little of each of them. And then over time, when you are doing it, you start to learn that, okay, I can actually do a little bit more of this, or this wasn't as important, or it doesn't feel as important at this point, because I'm, I'm seeing and I'm doing this and I'm learning at the same time. Because all of this happened in your market, in your context, with your team, um, in, in the different cultures and so forth. But this type of tool then kind of puts it back in the other way around and say, hey, but here's a simple tool that you can actually do many of these things and many of the things are kind of interconnected and automatically contributing to each other and, and feeding quickly uh, data. So there's tools for that. Um, I haven't even used myself this tool. I use this because of the simplified visual representation directly from their, their site. Uh, so this, this um, is just meant to give a uh, concept idea that there are tools for this and they are meant to make this whole exercise uh, much more efficient. So now when then is okay, now we have a basis of all of this. So how do we take action on this? How do we, how do we orient ourselves to, to, to start? From what corner do we do, do this? And, and how do we organize ourselves and our teams and our, our activities? 